Hi, welcome to Automate Now and to another episode of Intro to Selenium WebDriver. This is Marco Cruz. In today's video, we're going to focus on learning how to find text on a web page. So let's dive in. So here we can see that we already have one test that we've written in the past. We're going to be writing a new test. But before we do that, I would like to rename a few things. Recall that we named this class Sandbox. The reason why I chose Sandbox is that if we go to the Automate Now website, we're going to see that in fact there is a page called Sandbox. But so far we've only written tests for homepage. So it is a good idea to change the name of our class to match the type of test that we are writing. And therefore, since these tests are going to be related to the homepage, we're going to rename this class to homepage. So to do that, you're going to right click on the class name and select refactor and then rename and simply type the new class name. When you're done, hit enter. Now the class name has been changed and you can see on the left here that your changes have been reflected. In a similar way, we can rename our tests. So for example, if I don't like this test name, I can right click on it and say refactor and rename. I'm simply going to rename this one to test page title. and hit enter. Now we're ready to start writing the next test. Let's go back to the Automate Now website to see what we're going to do. In this test, we're simply going to verify that this text appears on the screen. Let's get to work. So I'm going to go to the end of the first test and then add some space to start my new test. Recall that we start every test as follows, at test, and then we add public void and the name of our test. We're simply going to call this one test greeting and then we need our open and close parentheses and we also need the open and close brace. If you want IntelliJ to automatically add those braces, you can hit Control shift enter and that will be done. Let's begin by writing down what our test is going to be doing. First, we're going to navigate to the home page. Then we're going to verify the welcome message. And lastly, we're going to close the browser. By now, this should seem familiar to you. Notice that in the first test, we also navigated to the home page. So we can copy this code and then paste it here to be reused. We can also copy this driver that quit and paste it here. Now, all we need to do for this test is to verify the welcome message. So before we can verify the text, we need to first find the element that contains the text. And the way we do that in Selenium is by using the method called findElement. So we're going to say driver.findElement. And notice that this method takes one parameter of type by. If you type control Q on your keyboard, you're going to see more details about this method. And here we can see that by comes from the Selenium class library. So we use by to locate elements, and we call that locators. So when we talk about an element locator, we're talking about the strategy that we're using to locate that element. So you may be wondering what are those locator strategies. So let's go ahead and type by here. And we're going to say by dot, and here are the different locator strategies. You can find an element by the class name, by its CSS selector, by its ID, and so forth. Generally, you're going to want to find an element using its ID if one is provided. Otherwise, you can use other popular strategies such as CSS selector or XPath. Let's take a look at our website to see what strategy will work best. So here I'm going to hit F12 on the keyboard and then I'm going to click on this arrow here. I'm going to go over to the element that contains the text that I want and I'm going to click on it. Notice that this element now appears highlighted on the console. We can see that its HTML tag is P for paragraph. We also see that there is no ID associated with it. For example, if you go up here, here we have a different tag for a different element that contains an ID. This is what I was talking about. If you have an element that contains an ID, try to use that ID by all means, since it is very unlikely that it will change. In our case, however, we don't have an ID, so we're going to have to find a different strategy. So what I'm going to do here is type Control F, and here we find a search box. The strategy that I'm going to employ is going to be XPath. If you've never written XPath before, don't worry. 
I will be providing links in the video description for some of the XPath tutorials that I put together in the past. For now, let's just say that we need to start by typing forward slash forward slash and then the name of our tag, which is P. And then we're going to type open and close brackets. And inside those brackets, we're going to type text, open and close parentheses, and then equals. And then we're going to type single or double quotes. And inside of those quotes, we're going to type the text that we're looking for. Let me grab it from here. Say copy. And then paste it inside of those quotes. So let's review what I've done here. I've said find me a paragraph tag that contains this text. I'm using this method called text and I'm giving it the text that I'm expecting to find. When I hit enter, I get no results, which is kind of strange. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to select this element once again to get it highlighted. And notice that this text contains a blank space at the end. This method here called text requires that the text match exactly. So we need to add a space at the end. And as soon as we added that, we can see that the element is highlighted in green, meaning that it found it. And here we can see that it found one of one on the page. And this is great because that means we only have one element that matches our criteria. So this right here will be our XPath locator. You want to find a locator that matches only one result. And we found it. So let's go ahead and copy this, go back to our test. And now we're going to say XPath here, hit enter. And this expects a string. So we're going to paste our XPath locator inside quotes, like so. So now we've completed the step of finding the element that contains the text that we want. Next, we need to grab the actual text. So we're going to go to the end of this statement here. And we're going to type dot get text. And this will grab the actual text. Welcome to automate now and we place a semicolon at the end to complete the statement. Now comes the most important part for this test. We're going to make sure that that text matches a specific value, like we did up here. We made an assertion verifying that the page title matched this specific text. So just like we did here, where we store the page title in a specific variable, we need to do the same thing here. We need to store this text in a variable. So we're going to create a string here and we're going to call it greeting. And we're going to set it equal to the text that we grabbed from the website. Next, we will perform the assertion. And we're going to say assert dot assert equals. I would encourage you to pause the video now to try to figure out what should go in here next. Great, let's move on. So the first thing we're going to say here is greeting comma and then the text we expect to find. And that's going to be inside quotes. I'm just going to copy the text from here. Control C, Control V. Notice that this time I did not add a space at the end. The reason why we included the space here was because we're using this method called test. And this method takes into account that space. However, by the time this method has finished executing and the text is stored inside greeting, it will no longer contain the extra space. Hence, we don't need to add it here. This may seem a bit confusing, especially if you're just getting started with Java, but don't worry, you will get the hang of it as time goes on. Next, we're going to add our custom error message, like we did up here. And remember that this part is not required, but it is highly recommended. So we're going to say here that the greeting did not match. Greeting message did not match. And that's it. We're finished writing our second test. Now we can go ahead and run it. I'm going to click here and say run. And great, one test passed. Now let's make sure that this test will fail in the event that the message changes. So I'm going to add an extra exclamation point here and run the test again. And indeed, we see that the test has failed because the expected value did not match the actual value. And here we see our customer error message. Let's go ahead and fix our test again. To wrap things up here, let me show you another way that we can make this validation. 
So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to type assert dot assert true. And notice that this requires a boolean. So we're going to say greeting dot contains. So what is the text that we expect the greeting to contain? And that could be welcome. And that's it for this statement. We are checking that the greeting contains the text welcome. Obviously, when this method gets executed, this will become true, so the assertion will pass. Let's go ahead and run it. And there we have it. Our test has passed. So, so far we have two tests within this class. Can you think of some ways in which we could improve the way these tests are written? For example, notice that we have duplicate code here and here and also here and here. Having duplicate code is a big no-no in automation and software development in general. Not only will this test take longer to run, but they will also become more difficult to maintain as we add more and more tests. In the next video, we're going to learn how to clean this up. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thank you.